All right, let's run through the dog room slash Lego room into the relative safety of the engine room. Last night we kind of came uh, grinding to a halt. I had all of the uh, housings and everything ready to go, but I didn't have one of the uh, primary gear thrust washers. I've got about a dozen for the 1275. Of course, the cranks are bigger there. I thought, ah, this morning though, I remembered the old Moak 850. And look what was still stuck to the crank. And wouldn't you know, it's the perfect size, perfect thickness. This is all A plus stuff. Um, about as good um, as you can make one of the 1275s even really using original components. We're up to the clutch just to show some of these cool components. I don't think I've ever seen a Borgenbeck disc. A matched dated set here. Our lightweight Cooper S uh, flywheel, one of the early two-piece ones, but one of the lightest uh, factory flywheels I've seen. This is off the uh, 1380 that we were running. Uh, back plate, everything in nice shape. Got this to about a uh, oh, three thousandths or so with that uh, thrust washer I found on the old Moke 850 downstairs. Lapped in the flywheel. Let's talk about some of the details of putting on this uh, 1275 cylinder head here. As I said, we were getting ready to put the flywheel on. I like these A plus uh, rocker sets. This is the standard 1.3 ratio. Of course, on the small bore engines, it's questionable whether there was any value at all in doing the one and a half. In our case, certainly not because we had to notch the uh, block for exhaust valve clearance. So as the exhaust valve fully opens, it goes into the block a tiny bit. Um, we made it a minimal amount by moving the cylinder bores around, as we've discussed. It's reconditioned these A-plus rockers. They're usually just in fantastic shape with a new shaft. Um, the only little thing I'm using, a Kometic gasket. I'm actually using the same three-layer gasket I use on the 1380 race engines. And over here, with the clearance to the small bore 998 block, if I skewed it just right, it missed the rivet, but I elected to take a round file and put what I'll call a, a fingernail notch in the cylinder head casting just to be sure that rivet didn't try to get crushed uh, in the cylinder head gasket installation. Still more details. We mentioned that we took about 145 or so off the deck of the block to uh, bring it down to the short 1098 pistons. Um, now that entailed a little bit of clearancing, as we guessed. It'll become obvious that clearance is needed for the standard water pump. And uh, this one here is one of the MED um, race pumps, they say. It's got no bypass, cast off. And it uses this, not a machined edge, but a cast rounded edge that looks like a good idea. But I'll admit that we've had some issues with them in full racing engines. Uh, maintaining high RPM, you see a lot of pressure here. They do tend to leak on the full race engines. But this is pretty much what a lot of the water pumps look like. And so we did the best job we could with a nice thick gasket. And uh, we're going to see if we can make this one work on a small bore with relatively minor pressures. We've got good clearance here. We've got good silicone all around. And we've got a matching set of the... Uh, 7 16 bolts. This part's not very exciting. 